Hey everyone, this is Pallavi and today I'm going to show the 21st game of the book Chess the Art of Logical Thinking by Neil MacDonald. Now this game was played between Serovan and Ivanchuk in Groningen in 1997. The opening played was um, King's Indian Attack. This game illustrates the importance of center control, peace activity and uh, flexibility, king safety, pawn structure, control of dark squares, adaptability and smart piece development and piece placement in chess strategy. While not achieving the same level of uh, superstardom as his compatriots Morphy and Fisher, Yasser Sera one has notable victories to his name against legendary figures in the chess world, including Karpov and Kasparov. In this instance, he swiftly defeated Ivan Chuk in just 22 moves. Let's see the game. So I started with d4. Controlling the center and also making way for the bishop and the pawn is supported by the queen. Now black played knight f6. Develops towards the center and controls the e4 square preventing white's e4. Now black uh, white played c4. Having put one pawn on the fourth rank, white follows the uh, the time-honored recipe of putting another pawn alongside it. Now his pawns control the center squares like uh, c5, then d5, and then e5. Not bad after only two moves. Now black played g6. In simpler terms, black is not immediately contesting the center with his pawns. Instead, black is letting white build a strong pawn center and then intends to attack and break it down. The first move in this plan is to position the bishop on g7 to target white's d pawn. Now, white played knight c3. At the same time, White is advancing their pieces confidently and directly. The knight is being prepared to assist in the advancement of the king's pawn. Now black played bishop to g7. The bishop is excellently placed on g7 for both for defensive and aggressive duties. e4. White has successfully formed a strong pawn center providing them with ample space advantage. This advantageous position allows white to develop their pieces with three open ranks behind their pawns. Now black played d6. This versatile move serves multiple purposes. It prevents white from pushing e4 to e5 to force uh, the black knight away, opens up a diagonal for uh, black's queen's bishop makes way for the knight to occupy the d7 square and readies black to potentially target the white center in the next move let's say e5 now white played bishop to d3 a secure uh, a secure uh, peace development strategy white plans knight ge2 then f2 to f3 and bishop to e3 to fortify his center against potential attacks even though the bishop won't have an immediate role on d3 it's best to move it out before it becomes obstructed by the knight on e2 so why develop the bishop first now black played e5 it might appear odd that black initially positions their bishop on g7 to challenge um, the white center and then obstructs its uh, diagonal with e5. The bishop itself may not be thrilled with this decision. However, envision the consequences if black refrained from challenging the white center with pawns and merely move their pieces around. The game might progress as follows. Let's say instead of e5, black plays knight c6. Then um, it's attacking the pawn on e, uh, d4 right now, knight g2. 
developing and supporting the pawn as well white ca uh, black castles king side white castles king side and then bishop to d7 and then f4 now in this scenario black would be under pressure facing the possibility of being pushed back with uh, either with e5 or d5 leading to a disorganized retreat of their pieces contemporary dynamic opening strategies have uh, haven't abandoned the concept of using pawns to contest center control instead they have elevated this strategy to a more sophisticated level by playing e5 black asserts uh, their claim to an equal share of space on the king side a move that will define the strategy in the middle game after e5 now white played d5 a move like d takes e5 then d takes e5 would uh, benefit black as it splits white center and opens up opportunities for the black knight on d4 white on the other hand prefers to keep their center intact and maintain a queen side space advantage uh, the likely strategy for white involves c4 to c5 followed by capturing on d6 and using the open c file for rook infiltration into the black queen side while this plan is a long term goal it provides a strategic direction for white now after d5 black played a5 Ivanchuk anticipates and counters White's plan by making a forward thinking move. He recognizes that the move b4 would be uh, instrumental in facilitating uh, c4 to c5 advance and promptly prevents it by playing a5. Now White played knight g e2. Strategic thinking guides the decision to place the knight on e2 instead of its favorite f3 square. The choice ensures the f pawn remains unobstructed, which turns out to be a wise move as the f pawn can both defend on f3 and attack effectively on f4. So after knight g e2, now black played knight a6. Ivanchuk strengthens his control over the b4 and c5 square. f3. A necessary precaution for white, they want to place the bishop on e3. However, making this move immediately with bishop e3 would allow black to initiate a kingside counterattack with knight g4 and then bishop d2 and then f5 gaining valuable time if white instead opts for castle instead of bishop d2 then queen h4 threatens checkmate on h2 leading to further weakening of, of white's dark squares with h3 and then knight takes e3 f takes e3 is a positional disaster for white because black's dark squared bishop has no rival and will become a dominant after say bishop h6 so white played f3 now black played knight d7 ivanchuk uh, prepares for the pawn to move from f7 to f5 a crucial strategic element in the king's indian setup in this case black must protect the f pawn f5 pawn and the best way to do it is by castling on the king side and positioning the rook on the f8 square now white played bishop e3 white slots the bishop into a perfect gap in his pawn structure and is ready to support it with queen d2 now black played bishop h6 no 
black did not make a blunder right now if white goes with bishop take uh, h6 then queen h4 check followed by queen takes h6 he regains his bishop in this scenario the black queen ends up sitting on h6 uh, in command of an excellent diagonal so after bishop h6 white played queen d2 a good move Seromon chooses a method that ensures it is his queen that benefits rather than the black queen bishop takes e3 the only consistent move as now the bishop was attacked twice queen takes e3 mm, white's queen replaces the bishop on e3 black exchanged bishops believing that the white center's pawns are on the light squares rendering the bishop on d3 less effective however this leaves black's dark squares around the king vulnerable while ivanchuk's decision seems risky it creates an unbalanced position requiring seravan to play with precision bravery and creativity to gain an advantage black played c6 a very tempting move which opens up the b6 square for the black queen nevertheless in view of white's strong reply seravan has suggest suggested that uh, queen h4 check then g3 queen e7 h4 knight d c5 as a better approach for black his queen should stay on e7 to aid the defense rather than go off hunting counterplay on the queen side so black played c6 now white played a very good move queen to h6 the white queen makes a decisive uh, sorry a decisive blocking uh, move blocking the uh, black king from castling this move showcases Seravan's strategic acumen as he avoids two potential mistakes firstly if white castles king side black could exchange queens with queen b6 making his king safer and exploiting white's weak dark squares secondly castling queen side may seem natural but it exposes the white king to more risks in response black could play knight a c5 followed by a5 to a4 um, launching an attack seravan's choice in uh, avoiding these ob obvious moves demonstrates a keen understanding of the position's requirements so queen h6 now black played knight d c5 black advances his counter attack but he loses a strong defender the knight from his king side if white had pushed the pawn from f3 to f4 to attack the f um, attack on the f file black could respond with e5 takes f4 and after the recapture rook takes f4 like after castling uh, it would clear the way for knight to e5 making the knight quite powerful there hence it was wiser for black to use the other knight with knight a c5 instead of the d knight so after knight d c5 white played another good move rook d1 again zero one avoids castling queen side now here is a tragic comedy that might have happened after queen side castle how the knight b4 attacking the bishop and the pawn bishop b1 and then a4 and if here white plays this blunder and then knight b3 it's a checkmate so here white played rook d1 supporting the bishop queen b6 when you have committed a wrong plan to a wrong plan it's hard to switch to passive defense nevertheless black should have chosen queen e7 um, to maintain the queen's role in stabilizing the queen side sorry king side and now 
white weight bishop b1 another good move it's um, the bishop moves out of the way so that after queen takes b2 then d takes c6 b takes c6 rook takes d6 when black is crumbling on the dark squares the immediate threat is queen g7 so after bishop b1 now black did king e7 defending d6 pawn f4 good move finally the time the time is right for a decisive breakthrough in the center that can lead to victory e takes f4 if instead f6 then queen g7 check is winning for white so e takes f4 now rook f1 instead of recapturing right away white opts to introduce the final reinforcements into the battle this approach is both strategic and flexible particularly because of the because the f4 pawn is vulnerable white has effectively positioned all their pieces on active squares without the need to castle and the king has remained on remained secure on e1 so after rook f1 black played rook f8 black is significantly outmatched in the center a rook on a8 and a knight on a6 are effectively out of the game while the queen's influence in the center is minimal in contrast white has both rooks and the queen actively engaged in the action it's evident that uh, something has gone awry for black and it all started with the clever move of queen to h6 now white played queen takes f4 the queen returns to the center to support the advance e5 and also gave a check on f6 sorry here with the support of the rook now black played f6 defending the two threats i mentioned in the last move d takes c6 a collapse occurs along the d file now black faces the double threat of knight d5 check winning the queen on d6 sorry b6 and another threat is queen takes g6 queen takes d6 check so now black played queen takes c6 he has to defend the d6 but now the white knight on c3 has a dream square on d5 but white played knight d4 and the other knight reaches almost a as a as fine a square with gain of time now it's attacking the queen queen e8 now if had black had played queen to c7 then knight d5 check loses the queen if queen d7 then knight d5 check king d8 knight b6 costs a rook so black played queen e8 now white played knight d5 check king d8 and then queen takes d6 check the final collapse of black's hold on the dark squares now bishop d7 if knight d7 then knight e6 check only move queen takes e6 and then queen takes e6 white gains the queen so black played bishop d6 and now white played knight b5 ivanchuk resigned because the threat is queen b6 check and then king c8 knight d6 check and then uh, winning the black queen on e8 because the queen is now double attacked so if after uh, knight b5 if black plays knight takes e4 then bishop takes e4 queen takes e4 check king f2 queen h4 check king g1 black has run out of checks leaving him defenseless against all the threats so the threats are like queen takes f8 check then uh, knight takes f6 then knight b6 and also there is queen uh, sorry queen to b6 check 
so there are like four threads so here after knight b5 black resigned now some key principles and lessons learned from the game center control dominating the central squares is crucial piece activity active and well coordinated pieces are vital flexibility be open to changing your plans as the game evolves king safety protecting your king is a top priority pawn structure the arrangement of pawns impacts piece mobility control of dark squares dark squares can be crucial for position adaptability recognize and adapt when your plan isn't working piece placement place your pieces efficiently and avoid entanglement thank you for watching i hope you learned something from this game as well if you like the video please like comment and share and also subscribe to my channel to show some support thank you bye bye